I want to pose a hypothetical question to you that's actually much less hypothetical than it is real. But let's say that I'm a <laughs> solo minister of a, a smallish church that has three kids who are actively involved, uh, maybe a couple more in on the fringes. What does sustainable ministry look like in a context of that sort where it, it certainly bucks the trend of the traditional, we have X, a huge number of kids coming to our weekly gatherings. What, what recommendation would you have for someone in that position? Let me give you the ideal. Yeah. And then uh, we can pull off of that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, if I were, if I were a pastor and we had three kids, um, I would set up some rhythm where we got to be together, um, and I'm, I'd have one other leader probably with me. We'd get together on some rhythm, so mm -hmm. once a week, once a month, whatever yep. the kids could decide. Yeah. Um, and and it doesn't really matter what we do. Yeah. You know, we can study Habakkuk or we can race go karts. That's uh, so interesting. Um, because the the program is a thinly veiled excuse to provide um, uh, relationships with between kids and, and and godly adults, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I had a similar experience growing up. Our youth group was a little larger. So say we had ten kids, maybe we had, that would be our peak. Yeah. Um, but because in the church would keep hiring these very part time. Mm. Baptist students for mm -hmm. our Presbyterian youth group, uh -huh. and uh, and and they would last maybe six months or so, mm -hmm. and but when they left, our pastor George would kept having these meetings at his house mm -hmm. to talk about well what, now what do you want you mm -hmm. know, <laughs> mm -hmm. and it was all you know commiserating oh we've run off another one and oh it's yeah. so bad, yeah. but in the process. George, our pastor, became very significant in all of our lives. And I don't remember anything he taught us. I don't remember anything that we did other than we played basketball in his yard and we ate pizza. Huh. And, um, but the, just imagine the incomparable power of a, how rare it would be for a kid to grow up meeting even monthly with their pastor and two or three other kids. That's rich. You know, we've, we've, I've used this phrase, you know, s somebody who knows the details of their life, yeah. bearing witness to the details of their life that is just in their cloud of witnesses that knows what's going on. Mm -hmm. And a thing as simple as we're going to, we always go to Taco Bell and we get the gordita right. and yeah. we tradition. drink Mountain Dew and, mm -hmm. and we do highs and lows. Right. And everybody says the best part of your week, worst part of your week, and we pray for each other and that's it. Yeah. No programming necessary. Yeah. Yeah, I would probably um, layer that with a, uh, you know, if there's a denominational camp or yeah. conference or something that somebody else plans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. And I just, I take the kids to that mm -hmm. or send them with some other volunteers in the church. Yep. Um, I think that, you know, that would be my ideal. Hmm. Um, you know, if it's a pastor who feels like, oh, I'm allergic to teenagers, they terrify mm. me, yeah. I just don't know what to do, then I would see if I could find a couple in the church, ideally people, at least two people who are not related to each other, right? right. Child protection, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, I'd find a couple leaders who could just say, meet with these kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just spend time with them and do it, you know, if, if they want to go you know, on a beach retreat, let's do a beach retreat. Right. You know, and, right. and the beauty of having a, a small um, group is that the funding, instead of spending money on a youth director, do things like send them to one of these Lilly High School Youth in Institutes. Yeah. There are 80 of them around the country. Yeah. So send the kids, send each one of them to a different one and just say the church is paying your thousand dollars or whatever mm -hmm. it costs for you to be there mm -hmm. and those kids come back to revitalize the congregation. Right. So we've, there's one uh, that I just love in Monmouth, Illinois that's mm -hmm. all about, you know, food sustainability and eco-justice and it's at, at Monmouth College and, the, yeah. you know, we've worked with a, a school out at Westmont College in California they're just, you know, we've done a little uh, work with the Duke Youth Academy, which is sort of the 
the flagship of all yeah. of these, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, there, but uh, there are so many of these uh, in almost every denomination. There's so many of these high school youth institutes that it's well worth the money mm. and worth more money than hiring a youth director. Sure. Sure, because the long-term impact, yeah. it, it, it infuses more life into the congregation once they return and yeah. it has a lot and of they, transformative power. They get this theological vocabulary. Yeah. They, right. it, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, those things are amazing. Yeah. Um, I'm so, uh, I haven't seen one yet that I'm not thrilled about. Mm -hmm.